Today I'll be reviewing this Weller 12 watt soldering iron. It's powered by an internal 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp hour battery. It has a USB C charging interface and it comes with a protection cover that when you put it back on as such it actually uh, forces it to go off. It does have a work light here. While it's heating up it blinks green. It takes about 45 seconds to heat up. When the battery is fully flat it takes about an hour to charge up. It will fully discharge in about 45 technically based on the calculations 48 minutes. It, it will run on a power pack or a charging port. It will not charge or run on a USB-C to USB-C cable. It doesn't work with PD chargers that have the multi-volt capability. Even if it has a 5 volt capability in here, it doesn't work with these. It only works with your good old school USB-A charging ports um, on these power adapters or, wherever you, or, or on one of these uh, power banks. So it has to have the USB-A connector. Charging is 5 volts, 2 amps. That's 10 watts. So it won't keep up with the uh, output power of 12 watts. So if you do hook it up to a power supply, one of these or these, and you have a full battery, it will extend the runtime by about 4 hours. So you get about 4 hours and 48 minutes of runtime. I haven't tested that out. That's just calculating that time based on the specifications. 12 watts on the tip and 10 watts coming in on the charger. And the 2600 milliamp hour battery. So it does come with a 0.4 millimeter conical tip. And it removes uh, just like that. They do sell a chisel tip. It's a really large four millimeter chisel tip. It only comes in packs of three. They're 13 bucks a piece. This was a little over 40 bucks for this pack. But, uh, and if you're buying new tips of the conical 0.4 millimeter, they come in packs of three only as well. Same price. 13 bucks a piece, a little over 40 bucks for a set of three. So just to put on the other tip or take off, it just pushes on like the old RCA connectors. It's ready to go. It does heat up to 950 degrees Fahrenheit or 510 degrees Celsius. A couple other things to note about this soldering iron is it is not ESD safe and it does have an auto power down feature if you leave it on. So I'm going to use this thermal gun here which measures up to about 1050 degrees and uh, check out the tip on here while it's warming up and see how close it gets to the 950 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's give it a go. So I have this other iron over here. It's set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for reference. And it's riding around 400. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but 396, 404. I'm going to turn on the uh, weller and let it heat up. Starting to heat up 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Light stopped flashing at 530 ish. 600. Seven fifty, eight hundred, getting close to eight fifty,
Don't know if it'll make it up to 950. Well, that's been some minutes. Uh, never really crossed uh, 900. One thing with this getting so hot, it, it really starts to fry the end of it fast. And you got to retin your end. So it takes solder again. Even shutting off for a second, a few seconds to let it cool down a little bit. Because it just bakes the solder on the end. That's not too bad. Go ahead and leave it on just cooking because the end will just get completely baked and solder just kind of falls off of it, balls up, beads up on it. Let's try soldering some things. So I'm going to test this out soldering two wires together. There you go. So we're going to solder these pins into a circuit board. There you go. This is a 14 hog wire I twisted together. I'm going to solder with a 4 millimeter chisel tip. Definitely taking a sweet time to get this last bit here. So that was the uh, four millimeter and a 14 gauge wire. So here's the finished result. So I'm going to do the same thing, but with the uh, 0.4 millimeter tip, try to solder a 14 gauge wire together. I don't know. It's definitely not. Uh, Heating up like the chisel bit as much. The solder is already dry even on the back side. Definitely struggles with two uh, 14 aug wires wrapped together. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it across without melting the, completely melting the rubber coating. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. Got a little bit right here, but that's about it. Just can't even tons of solder on the back end to make a good connection. Just can't get two 14s heated up enough. Okay, we'll call that a no. So this is the results of the 0.4 millimeter tip. I'm trying to solder two 14 augs wires together just didn't have enough heat it started going at the beginning there and just i couldn't get it to uh melt solder anymore going further up the wire and it was just melting the bejesus out of the insulation here which is no good so 
not going to be helpful. So I know this is a crimp on for the wire, but I wanted to see the capabilities of how much this could really solder, how big of an item. So I was going to give this a go. It's just some scrap I had. See if it heats it up enough to start melting the solder in there. Definitely having a hard time. Let's see if it gets up there. Yeah, it doesn't look like it has enough power at 12 watts to uh, get this heated up enough to melt solder. It's not even getting close, really. So we'll say a no. So with the conical tip, it's 0.4 millimeters at the very end. So it widens out pretty quickly. So if you're reaching into some areas, it's kind of easy to hit the taller items when you're trying to reach in and get there. But for the most part, it works pretty well. You could hit up all these joints pretty easily. So here I was just going to touch up a solder joint. See how you could easily hit that pin. Let's clean the end a little bit. So I'm just. <clears throat> Reheating these joints just for testing. See how well it works. Getting in there. There you go. So I did a several there. Just reheated them just to test it out. So my final thoughts on the soldering iron is that it does pretty good on uh, the little things. Like this is 20 aug wire, it solders that together well. It does good on uh, you know doing your PC board uh, soldering. One thing I found, even though it's a tiny tip, 0.4 millimeter conical tip, it gets fat really quick. And uh, when working in tight areas on a circuit board, it easily can bump into other circuitry or other wires on that board. So not crazy about how fat that tip gets so quickly. Um, for the chisel end, it does give it a little more soldering power. I was able to solder this 14 aug wire together. Um, this, the, with the 0.4 millimeter, I was not able to, but the chisel end I was just barely. It was, it was starting to melt the insulation a little bit by the time it got heated up enough. Um, other than that, I mean, not too bad. I did wear out the uh, battery during the testing. Towards the end, I had to plug it in, that charge a little bit. One thing also is uh, the end gets very hot and it just smokes it, and it it's hard to tin the end of your soldering iron because it's all blackened. It happens really quick and uh, when it gets blackened like that and you try to put a little solder on it it won't tin it just beads up and falls off so <clears throat> you might have to wet it on a sponge push it in here in this uh, copper uh, sponge and uh, kind of work it a little bit to get that uh, blackened end uh, cleaned up a little bit before you could tin it. I've even had to shut it off, just shut it off, let it cool down a little bit, and then clean up the end, get it tinned again, turn it back on, so it heats up some, and get, and then put it back on your work and do some soldering. It does seem like you're kind of fighting that really hot temperature uh, here and there that I found on this. So if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>